Good morning and welcome to another video. I am here in a very special place. It's Badgers Wood and Tom, back garden bushcraft, hey is actually next to me for once. How are you, my man? I am very well, dude. Good. Bring it in. We've, um, we've spent the night here, both in our hammocks, because Tom's actually running a carving course here, hence why I've just showed you some of these amazing hand-carved spoons, spatulas and all sorts. So we're going to have a nice day, aren't we? You're going to take charge, I'm here to help out. Yeah, it's going to be and so nice be having having you here to help, because yeah. I've done a few of these on my own, <laughs> and uh, it's so, going to be so nice having a mate here and also someone else to help out. Definitely, <laughs> and, and what a spot, Tom. This is amazing. A huge Beautiful, parachute. We've got the fire on already. Like I said, we've spent the night in our hammocks, so we're just going to wait for the customers, or yeah. the Tom's clients rather, to turn up, and I'll give you a little tour of what's around. We've got two people coming today, I think. That's amazing. That's, cool. that's going to be really good. One of your quieter ones, but that's a yeah. nice thing, actually. No, it's good. It's quite nice. The last few I've had, like, six, yeah. five or six, so be nice and calm. <laughs> awesome. Let's show you this setup. There's the hammock right behind us. I slept in mine, obviously Tom slept in his, and it's funny just how similar those two setups are. The under blankets are a different color, but really, really similar. And it's, uh, it's really nice to just spend time swinging between the trees, actually. And like I've just said, this course area is amazing. It's really, really massive well done to Tom. I'm really excited to be here and helping him on today's course. And it's so good to see him in his prime doing what he's doing. So really looking forward to it. I'll share some of the little bits with you and just a little bit of an overarching view of the day. And it will hopefully inspire some of you guys to come along onto one of these courses. So naturally, it wouldn't be breakfast without Boxec. And it's become an absolute favourite of mine and Tom. Um, it's just one of the tastiest bacons. And the fact that it comes in a huge slab and you can just chop it into how thick you want makes it a win-win for me for camping. So we're going to get this on. The kettle's just starting to boil, which is good. There's a little bit of steam coming out and it's just a nice little addition to have that ready for the client and we'll get some good grubbiness so that we're all nicely fueled for the day ahead. But I'm really, really happy to be here with Tom. We spent a really nice evening just catching up, chewing the fat, recording a Wodesman episode and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that. So you're using your new knife, aren't you, Tom? I am indeed, filled in steel. It's a beauty. The lichen. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of filled in steel. And I didn't and have good reason. <laughs> any ring tails. And this is a sort of like a traditional based sort of bird and trout knife. There's a really good video on Phil and Steele's channel, I think Joe Price's channel actually, uh, where he talks about the design. Yeah, of this Joe knife. Price was involved in the design, wasn't he? Yeah, Joe Price designed it, so we're big friends with Joe uh, through the Wodesman, so it was nice to support two of our mates. It's a beautiful knife. It certainly is. I love this little Petromax frying pan that Tom's got. No matter how warm you get it, the handle seems to still be cool, which is incredible. <laughs> Cooks things really nice it as well, does. and it's easy to clean. Don't grow hair on your waistcoat. I love box it. So do I. Delicious. <laughs> it's one of the nicest ways to cook bacon in the woods. Totally agree. Second you showed me it, I was blown away. Can't believe I'd missed it all those years. <laughs> 
I know. All those years of bacon and I couldn't have had the mistakes. I know. <laughs> We've still got a whole stack, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Ideal. Lovely place, dude. Thanks. Yeah, they did a really good job. They just got after a while, one or two. I was like, well, we'll just like a second parachute. And they're like, yeah, we can sort it one of those in here. Before. I was like, can we have like a structure that holds it up? And then I was like, stumped for everyone. And then they came up, I think they came up with the idea of a parachute. Yeah, it's great. Them in and they've done such a good job. I helped move some of these big logs in here, Lovely. and uh, me and Robin carried these in from the <laughs> we put them in the back of the Toyota and trundled them up here. I love it, it's brilliant. So, it wouldn't be a carving course, would it, Tom, if you didn't have to carve one of your own things again? <laughs> yeah, so last night we did have a couple of beers, didn't we, Liam? We did. <laughs> and we were recording Wodesman, and I'd left this. Um, on the firewood and we didn't notice that this had fallen in we heard a the shing. fire <laughs> and so when i noticed my my spatula was like a flaming torch so i had to interrupt the woodman recording go and grab this out and then just basically shim off the burnt bits with my knife really quickly but before the rest of it caught despite that it's still a beautiful and usable spatula isn't well, it yeah it's got a slightly wonky look now <laughs> but that's because i had to remove half of it because it was on fire <laughs> Even the course provider burns his own spatula. <laughs> Little flip soon. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, boy. Come on with you. I think they're still connected. <laughs> That's a sore sliver. <laughs> hey, actually, that cut it. Yeah, Having man. that little slice on there was. See. It's design, it's by choice. It's a happy little accident. <laughs> happy accident. I have unhappy accidents sometimes, <laughs> and I have to change. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we not It's just a bit of rind, it's alright. It's alright, we got lots. A beer from. We got, we got plenty, man. So the first batch of box deck over here is just about done. We're going to probably nibble into this and then get ready for the course. It's not only one of my favourite meals of the of the day just because it's the first meal of the day. It's because I get to eat bacon and box egg and it's so nice to be here sharing that with Tom. So true bro. And Tom's just doing God's work and chopping up some bread. Just butchering some bread over here, don't I love me. that, you can butcher it all day long. <laughs> That's brilliant. So we're gonna have some nice sandwiches, have a last little kind of relax by the fire before the clients come and hopefully show you some of that as soon as they do arrive. So second pan of box X going on. There's my sandwich ready to go. Thank you very much, Tom. I might just have it, like you said, as a kind of slice. Thank you, my dude. You're welcome. Cheers. That's good. Just what you need to set yourself up for the day. Mm -hmm. Got the kettle on as well, so I'll have coffee in a minute. <laughs> My normal ego will come out later rather than the demon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that bad without coffee. You're not. <laughs> He's been fine. <laughs> Side of our body, so I tend to turn to the side and carve off to the side because there's no way there I can cut myself, and I've got my femoral artery protected from the cutting tool. See when we're starting out, we want something that's wet. We want green wood. Is, is that not there worth worrying about? Uh, not that one. much. I would say there from the start. I'm pushing down here, and that's making this super stable. And I'm pinching my knees together, and I'm going to place the axe on top of the, the piece of wood and if you notice you can see the the circular rings in there the growth rings poison pick your axe so we're just in the middle of the morning session of the course and tom's got two extremely lovely students here with him and it's just a pleasure to be around the campfire learning and just helping out um, sharing a little bit of stuff that i have to add to the conversation and just hearing what everyone's got to say it's really lovely to kind of be learning with these guys 
and seeing Tom in his natural habitat as a teacher and what a great one he is. Um, the lads are just splitting up their billets ready for the next section of this carving course and it's been really nice to kind of go through the process of this carving from a tree all the way to the final product. So like I said we're at the splitting process now. I'm not going to show you too much because this is just a little vlog of me and Tom's day together and I hope you do come on this course because it is very very intrinsic to um, becoming a good carver I think. You can't do better than having a good bit of tuition. really nice features to a piece as well. Another thing to note as well is axe length. So the longest axe I'd use for carbon really is, is this sort of size. When you get above sort of 20 inches, this is fine. You can control this quite well. So just while Tom's going through the last of the axe work, I've just been making a sweet chestnut bark container. And you can now see the bevel is facing off. So, you see that? It's pointing out from me. The only thing that's hitting me is the butt of the knife. You can do this all day, I'm not going to get hurt. The knife stays pretty much still. Um, you can also do the chest lever, but thumb push. So rest your, your piece of wood and your knife against your chest and instead of doing all the big power you can just push with your thumb, just doing that. The knife doesn't move, you're just pushing and that's really good for tidying up and detail work. So again, this is a modified chest lever for detail cuts. It's good because it really gets you, allow, allows you to be able to see what you're doing. So again, really, really good. Um, next one, for going around corners like this, you can do the potato peeler grip. Now, people, it's a short part, they can put a knife in your thumb, but if you hold it in... So I've been carving away, uh, along with the other lads, under Tom's instruction, and just about to move on to the ball carving now. Get the spoon knife, the crook knife out. Exchange, and so they're like basically the paws of the tree. Looking nice, Tom. Thank you. Everyone's coming along well, aren't they? Yeah, they're doing great. It's a, it's a really nice day, actually. Yeah. We did a little tree plant ID walk as well, which was a nice bonus. We've not done that on the course before, so that was nice just because the Rick was asking some really good questions about the trees, so we thought we'd go for a wander and find them. Makes sense. So. <laughs> Gives it all context, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so we've just finished the course and what an amazing amazing time it was really nice not only to spend time with Tom a great friend but also Rick and Luke the two students who are on here today and it, because of that it was a really nice close intimate kind of gig I say I guess you can say here's the spoon that I managed to pull out extremely happy with how it's uh, it's coming along I've still got a good amount of meat to take out of there, but as you can see, the ball's coming along lovely. It's got quite an asymmetrical design. Really, really happy. And that's out of sweet chestnut, and actually the bark off of the billet I've turned into a little pot. So you can see on the bottom, scored that, and as you push that up, it forces these sides in. And I've made a little stopper at the top there. So that's a nice little primitive basket or pot that you could carry things in. Just something nice as a little reminder of this. So I'll take these two bits back home, finish off the spoon and probably pine pitch up this so it's a bit more watertight. But what a lovely spot here at Badgers Wood and it's been an absolutely lovely day. We're going to probably record some Wodesman podcast later. So I'm really looking forward to that. I might see Mike, Tom's dad, 
another face I haven't seen in forever because of course Tom and his dad weren't at the Bushcraft show this year which was a real shame so this is me and Tom's kind of chance to chew the fat and have that little experience together and it's just been really nice to be back with him and yeah what a lovely spot this is so definitely if you have any chance to get on any of Tom's courses in the future here at Badgerills Wood definitely definitely check them out it's a beautiful campsite so here's my camping setup we were going to camp in these tonight but we thought with the opportunity of a nice parachute a big group shelter a big roaring fire we might as well sleep next to it so I've actually got the Thornhill ultra heavy sleeping mat kind of pad that I've been working with him on um, I came up with the design and we just talked about it loads and he came up with some really awesome choices of materials and little ways of doing things so I'm really excited to show you it gives me a really good chance to do this record a little bit for you guys and yeah I'm gonna take down this tarp hammock Tom's doing the exact same over there and uh, yeah it should be really really nice there was also a little bit of dead fall or dead hanging wood rather up there so we thought it's a little bit safer we can sleep easy tonight and have the warmth of the fire to keep us nice and toasty This is a really special moment for me actually because I've been wanting to try this for ages and this is, like I said, the Thornhill Ultra Heavy Bedroll. I designed this with Scott a while ago and I haven't had the chance to use it. But what an amazing bit of kit that is. I'll show you around it now. It's full wax canvas with leather tie outs and a lovely wool blanket on the top and it's got this pillow section which if I show you from the top it's got an internal pocket it's got an internal pocket here so I can add material to make a buffed up pillow and under here there's a slit so I can put in a roll mat or a sleeping pad so there we have it for length guys absolutely amazing And the good thing about this is obviously you can sleep directly on this in a summer day, on a summer's day. But I can use it to put my inflatable Alton Goods air pad in here and that protects it from any punctures underneath. Just gives it that extra buffer, that extra layer of protection. Mike's just turned up, how are you? I'm fine thanks. Really good to yeah. see you again. That looks so comfy. See what you think. Oh, that's comfy. You good? Oh. Bro, you look comfy. That's real good. <laughs> so I can put stuff in the pillow still. I'm gonna put my pillow in the pillow. I've got the Thermarest pillow. That little go. I'm in bed. Yeah, you, you're ready. Turning in. Good night. We're getting a bit hungry, so I thought we'd um, try to scrap on the food pack. Tom's actually going to be sleeping on the reindeer hide tonight on the other side of the fire. I'll be asleep on this amazing little bedroll setup, just with my Corinthia Defence One sleeping bag, and it should be really nice, really lovely opportunity to just wild camp on the floor here. <laughs> He's not the only one with a new piece of gear. <laughs> Love that. That's a beauty, isn't it? It certainly is, dude. I feel as we're Boonie in campsite, pizza, Evan. we might as well campsite it up, you know? Amazing. Good bit of quality gear, that. Proper quality, dude. Really, really, really nice like that. Kit. I've used it three times now, and I love it. The food that it makes is just next level. I can imagine. So you're getting all the veg prepped? Yeah, just got some peppers and some onions, just doing some garlic. This is something I made at home. Nice. So this is um, a mixture of, onion, uh, of butter, salt, pepper, and garlic. Nice. And this is for garlic bread. That That's amazing. Oh. Then we got the dough. As you can see, my Mr. Men um, 
Mr. Perfect thing hasn't contained the dough. There's some serious <laughs> rise going on there. That's amazing. <laughs> Look at that. So we're just about to light up the fire, aren't we, Tom? We are. We've got some birch bark, we've got some fat wood, we've got some charcoal, and we've got some kindling in there. So we're just going to take a standard match. Light her up. Hey. Gonna light her in a couple of places. Yeah, and I this guess... thing is like amazing. Like I've been so impressed with it. Once that's going, I guess you close that and it close draws draws it through, does it? Yeah, you keep the front door closed and then you'll have the the draw go <laughs> through properly. Amazing. So yeah, that's the uh, light in it. It's that simple. <laughs> So, That's brilliant. Pretty cool. So I'll pop a couple more pieces of wood in and then close it up so we get the draw. Tom's got some garlic and butter just frying away in that pan. It's going to be amazing and that's for the garlic bread. Because of course, Tom, you've got some pre-made pizza dough, haven't you? I have, yeah. So, so we're going to be doing, what, what is it, garlic breads and pizzas. You're yeah, really so treating me again. <laughs> yeah, we've got, in each of these we've got some sourdough yeah. that's been rising all day. So we've got one garlic bread and then a pizza each. That's so amazing. So garlic bread to share, pizza each. And yeah, um, really good bit of kit, isn't it? It's it's rocking. I'll, I'll show you inside. Yeah, do. Whoa, hey, look at that. Cooking. Right, so I'm gonna just roll out the dough for the garlic bread. So I'm gonna flour my board, flour my hands, grab one of the doughs. We get this bad boy because it seems to want to be out of its cage. And yeah, no. I'm no pizza expert, but I know my way around eating one, so. <laughs> no, you're Italian. Oh. It's going to be good. Now, if I was at home, I'd add a sprig of rosemary, but I thought it was already a bit glamping bringing a uh, potted plant of uh, basil with me, so. <laughs> I drew the line at Rosemary. And here you find the uni pizza oven in this natural environment. Now you basically have a done pizza. Yep. Doesn't take long, does it? Yeah. She done. Woo! Look at that. So Tom, that looks like amazing garlic bread. I Look think at we need that. To tuck in. I'm just going to bring that to the camera. Look at that with the new field and steel lichen. Designed by Joe Price as well. That's a new purchase of yours, isn't it, Tom? It is, Liam. Got that from me at the Bushcraft Show. Beautiful bit of kit. And so is that pizza oven. Should we eat? After you. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Thank you so much. That's perfect. Spot on. It's like being in a pizza restaurant. Mm-hmm. In two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. You're welcome, bro. Wow. Glad you enjoy it. That's so good. That is insane. Woo. Uni smacked it. So Tom has been very busy making an incredible pizza. So we're going to get it onto yeah. that peel. Good right. work. And that's going straight in, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Looking good in there. Should we do this real time for them? Let's do it real time. Yeah? Yeah. Because it's pretty damn impressive, this thing. I mean, I don't know if I'll get in there, but yeah, this uni. When he did the garlic bread, it was literally like 
about a minute. Gonna and have a half. to interrupt you yeah. to turn it. <laughs> you can help me turn this, Liam. Can you uh, swiddle it round a little bit? Oh, the bottom's crisp enough. Oh yeah. Wow. Look at that. That's a bit of kit. <laughs> I'm very impressed with this thing. I literally love it. Because <laughs> I'm a huge pizza fiend, so to be able to make my own that tastes like restaurants, it's yeah. uh, pretty good. That's amazing. I've turned the dampener down slightly. Just uh, take the temperature down a little bit. Nice. Do you reckon it'll turn? Oh, yeah. <laughs> turn it? Yeah. Incredibly more. Incredibly! <laughs> hey, that's French, not Italian. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's my fault. Oh, I think I maybe put it on slightly too long. A little bit of burnt crust, but. That is amazing. If you could only smell this. If you could only smell this. Well done, Tom. Yeah, we'll that just take like this burn a little pizza. bit off, but the rest looks great, so. Amazing. Nice, I'll pop a bit of basil on it and we'll be good to go. It was a shame that you two weren't at the Bushcraft show, obviously, and I know a lot of you guys, the viewers, would have missed these two very <laughs> handsome fellas. <laughs> Um, and I was definitely lost without you. Me too, bro. Um, no, honestly, but I it's felt, nice to be doing this. I felt so out of the loop. <laughs> I really wished I could have gone, but it is what it is. It is what it is, and it's nice to be doing this with you too. Absolutely, and we probably got better pizza. So let's dig in. <laughs> it's my turn to make or mess up a pizza. So we'll go in for make first, and we'll see what happens. I'll just have to get it out. Great pizza dough, Tom. Mm. Good, isn't it? Very good. Yeah, so look how cool this is, guys. This awesome milk paint on this spoon that Tom's hand carved. We're going in with the pizza sauce. Some little flakes underneath. Get that melting into that tomato. We'll go in with a few onions. What do you reckon? Yeah, that sounds good. I love onion. Me too. And red onion's the best. It is, good Sweet. flavor. I've been making pickled red onions lately. Nice. Scatter a few of them on, and we'll get some salami to overhang them. And a bit of cheese to dress it off, I'd reckon. This boy is speaking my language. <laughs> the only language here is pizza. Oh yes, this is gonna be little parcels of goodness. In every bite. <laughs> this is great fun time. Fun, isn't it? Yeah. Pizza great. party in the woods. <laughs> you couldn't get better, really, could you? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll make the extra one extra cheesy. The, the next one's got the next one's got a whole one as well. Oh, nice. I got a ball per pizza. That's incredible. Well, you can't do with too much cheese on the pizza. That's true. Oh, we'll make the extra one extra cheesy. The, the next one's got the next one's got a whole one as well. Oh nice. I got a ball per pizza. That's incredible. Well you can't do with too much cheese on the pizza. So. That's true. There's the creation. Should we get her in Tom? Let's get her in. Woo! Oh, you went too far back. There you go. What's she done? I think I went too far back. <laughs> Alright. Looks like it's crisping up nice. I'll give it another second like that, Tom. 
That's puffing up beautifully. Nice. Oh, look at that. Amazing pizza. Ready? Ready. <laughs> Let's go. So we're just about to hit the sack now. I'm about to get onto the Thornhill Ultra Heavy bedroll. I've got the Corinthia Defense One sleeping bag and yeah, can't wait. It's been an excellent day here at Badgers Wood. The fire is cracking along. We've just recorded an episode of the Wodesman podcast, so please do go check that out. And definitely go check out Tom's channel as well, Campfire Carvings on Etsy and Back Garden Bushcraft on YouTube and Instagram. He's an awesome guy. I'm sure you've enjoyed the video of today and there's so much more to learn than you've seen on this little clip today. So yeah, I'll see you in the morning and until then, stay safe. So good morning guys, it's a wonderful morning here in Badgers Wood. Tom is cooking up some snassages <laughs> behind me and it's going to be a really nice breakfast. It's our last morning here, we're going to head off fairly shortly, Tom's got work, I've got to go back and get sorted for work this week. Life carries on doesn't it and um, what a lovely night it really was. Mike was obviously here, he turned up, we had those pizzas that you saw and we shared a really nice kind of hour of doing some Wozeman recording and just chilling by the fire. I laid on the Thornhill Ultra Heavy sleep roll system. Unfortunately I did get a little ember or a bit of ash blow onto my sleeping bag so I've got a tiny little hole in it. It's a Corinthia Defence one and it's only in the lining so I'm not too worried. It's my summer bag but I am going to get a nice nylon patch on it. That should be good and strong and keep it just from the air from getting in really. Um, but I think in the future a wool blanket on top wouldn't go too far amiss. But nevertheless, what a lovely morning here under the parachute at this course area. So like I said last night, definitely come check out Badger's Wood if you can. I'll leave you with a few bits of B-roll of cooking breakfast. And until then, stay safe, I'll see you soon. Did you say pizza peel? Oh, I dropped garlic on my crotch. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs>